Disney Wish, everything you need to know. I have heard that there may not be a nightclub on the Disney Wish, so we're going to get into that as well. I'm going to go over food, entertainment, youth areas, adult areas, all of it. So settle in. The Disney Wish is the fifth ship in Disney Cruise Line's fleet, and it is a fairy tale inspired castle floating on the seas. The Disney Parks blog says, quote, This fairy tale inspired space is a tribute to the story of Cinderella and includes a beautiful bronze statue of the beloved princess, stained glass embellishments in her signature colors, and icons from the Disney film classic that you can discover in unexpected places including the carpeting metalwork and light fixtures so let's talk about the literal star of the show the chandelier this glittering icon was designed with magical enchantment in mind and is actually a dazzling wishing star that comes to life in wondrous ways throughout the voyage especially when you step inside for the first time every tiny human coming aboard will receive their own wishing wand which they will use to make the first wish of their vacation during a special boarding celebration oh wow it also says this reimagined atrium will even evolve in a completely new way during every sailing, transforming from a classic fairy tale gathering space into a thrilling theater through the magic of built in special effects. The Grand Hall features the first ever atrium stage on a Disney ship and hosts dedicated shows and interactive entertainment that puts guests front and center as they play a special role in the magic. I was truly not very interested when they first announced the Disney Wish. Their artist renderings were pretty, but nothing, absolutely nothing compared to the reality. I cannot wait to get on this ship. These pictures and videos are stunning and we all know that it's always better looking in person so I can only imagine how fabulous it's really gonna be. Let's start out with main dining. 1923 evokes the glitz and glamour of old Hollywood. Named after the year the Walt Disney Studios was founded, this sophisticated dining establishment celebrates the unwavering spirit of the original studio that started it all. Travel back in time as you dine amid storyboards, sketches, and props that illustrate the early animation process while delighting in some of the tantalizing flavors found throughout the Golden State. I am super excited about 1923 just for all of the art and props that are in there. So it's really great to hear that the food is really good as well. I cannot wait. I am so excited to dine at that restaurant. Lou Mangello, Walt Disney World Radio, said quote, dinner at 1923 on the Disney Wish was far and away my favorite meal on board and maybe the best thing I've ever eaten on Disney Cruise Line. That's a strong statement and I can't wait to check it out. This tuna dish dish looks amazing. It's This dish is spiced ahi tuna with pickled lotus root, oyster mushroom, black sesame brittle, and a wasabi and yuzu mayonnaise. We're definitely going to have to try a few entrees at this restaurant. It looks so good. He even states that this could be an upcharge restaurant. I think he's right, but I'm really glad it's one of the main dining restaurants. They've taken it up a notch and made it just better quality food, it seems like, which I'm really excited to try. I've seen on multiple different posts that the food is absolutely phenomenal. Disney Cruise Line does have good food, but absolutely phenomenal is not in any of their main dining restaurant. Even the pasta per sets can get a little old after so time. So I'm really excited to try the new food on the Wish. I think it's going to be fabulous. Main dining restaurants on Disney Wish are totally another level. They have the Arendelle restaurant where Queen Anne and Kristoff are celebrating their engagement and they have invited you, their honored guests, to join them. Behold festive musical performances from Elsa and Olaf as you devour hearty Norwegian inspired cuisine made by Oaken himself. It's a dinner worth melting for. I really love that Oaken and Olaf are featured and they actually go by the tables in the dining room. Which is a lot of fun. Oaken and Olaf are two of my favorites from Frozen. Thanks here to Mrs. Popular Cruising for the Arendelle menu. I bet the sea bass is really good here. But obviously the most fun is watching the performances and getting engrossed in a story while you're eating dinner. The Disney Wonder has Tiana's Place and the Disney Magic has Rapunzel's and those are immersive. But I really think that the restaurants on the Wish are even more immersive than that. I also love the atmosphere in Arendelle. It looks like you really are in a castle. Just another Disney detail to make things that much better. And of course they will have worlds of Marvel. A cinematic dining experience. Join Ant-Man and the Wasp during Avengers Quantum Encounter, a demonstration of powerful superhero technology. Leap into your own heroic role using an interactive quantum core at your table to shrink and grow objects at the push of a button as you take part in an action-packed Avengers mission that unfolds around you. All the while, enjoy a worldly menu inspired by the Marvel Cinematic Universe featuring a range of delicacies from classic all-American fare to rich African flavors. So thanks to Lou Mangello for a look here at the World of Marvel 
menu. I have to admit, when they started releasing the Disney Wish information, it just really didn't look that too fantastic to I me. I did not think they could deliver on the Grand Hall. I thought for sure the pictures would be better. I don't know why. Disney is fabulous at theming and animation, but for some reason, I just wasn't really excited about it. It seemed maybe a little too geared towards family and tiny humans, and I usually travel as adult only. But watching all of the updates from the christening cruise, oh my goodness, I can't wait to get on this ship. <laughs> they take immersive to a whole new level with this And one. moving on to the adult and specialty dining, there are two specialty restaurants on board. These are for 18 and up. The first one is Paulo's Steakhouse. A timeless tale come to life. Prepare to be pampered at this elegant adults only restaurant inspired by the lovable pomp and circumstance of Cogsworth. The enchanted clock from Disney's Beauty and the Beast. An evolution of the Paulo restaurant that Disney cruisers already know and love. Paulo's Steakhouse offers a scrumptious selection of premium steaks and exquisite Italian dishes. Featuring two distinct dining areas amid a warm tranquil atmosphere with spectacular ocean views. Paulo's Steakhouse, one of the three new Beauty and the Beast adults only experiences on the Disney Wish, serves up subtle nods to Beast's loyal major doma throughout its magnificent decor. This is fairly similar to Paulo on the other four ships. The steak at Paulo on the Wonder and the Fantasy is not good at all. I should have known to get something else from Paulo, I think. And this was before they had said they were going to have a Paulo Steakhouse, so hopefully the steaks are going to be better. But I'll have to try there and find that out because I was a little disappointed with their steaks. They always deliver though. And they really seem to be over delivering on the Wish, so hopefully it's really good. The other one is Enchanté. At Enchanté, taste international dishes crafted by three Michelin star chef Anod Lament at this sophisticated adult exclusive restaurant, paying tribute to the romance loving character of Lumiere from Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Thanks to the MickeyVlog.com, we have this look at their menu. I gotta say, it's been kind of hard for me to find this menu, so I'm really glad that they have this here. I didn't want to just show you a typed out version. And then we have these really wonderful pictures from the Laughing Place. They do not actually have these dishes listed, so I'm gonna make a little bit of a guess on these. I think this is the soil grown tomatoes that come with a 12 hour confit and tomato water. I believe this would be the main lobster in homage to his father. This grilled beef comes with poivrade artichoke and beef jus. I don't think I said that word right. And of course, they do dessert very well. There are no names on this menu for these desserts, but they look fabulous. Ashante is $195 per person for the collection, put together with the very best that market and nature have to offer. This menu combines new creations with our signature dishes. Or they have the passion, which is $125. That comes with the soil-grown tomatoes, John Dory sea urchin, wild halibut, squab pigeon fermiere, cheese cart, and dessert. And if you want to add on a wine experience, that's $115 per person. For their version of a buffet, they have the Marceline Market. Discover an ever-changing menu of specialized offerings at Marceline Market. Named for Walt Disney's early childhood hometown in Missouri. Choose from 10 food stations and a cafe-style beverage bar with both indoor and outdoor seating. Enjoy a walk-around experience for breakfast and lunch and table service at dinner time. And of course, they have 24-hour room service as well as quick bites. Grab a quick bite for lunch, dinner, or any time in between on the upper decks at Mickey and Friends Festival of Food. A variety of delectable offerings and fan favorite treats are available from uniquely themed food stations. And their food stations include Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue, Donald's Cantina, Daisy's Pizza Pies, Goofy's Grill, and Sweet Minnie's Ice Cream. And then they also have the Joy of Sweets location on board, but that is not included. Still really cute though. One of the other fun new things they have on the Disney Wish is the Aqua Mouse. This is the first ever Disney attraction at sea. Join Mickey and Minnie on an exhilarating water adventure into a colorful cartoon world inspired by the famous Mickey Mouse animated shorts. A wash in immersive show scenes, music, lighting, and special effects, this fun-filled water experience invites Disney fans to glide up, down, around, and off the side of the ship. 760 feet of twisting tubes, providing breathtaking views of the ocean before splashing down into a lazy river. Now I've got to say, the POVs of the Aquamouse from the media christening cruise are not very good. It actually looks pretty boring, but I am almost positive that it is missing details that will make it a lot more fun in the future. Another fun activity that they have on the Disney Wish is the Disney Uncharted Adventure. This is an immersive family experience. Discover a layer of hidden enchantment on board the Disney With Wish Disney Uncharted Adventure. A first of its kind interactive experience that takes classic Disney storytelling to new heights. When an unknown evil force attacks the wishing its star, magic splits into pieces that land in far off realms. To bring back the star's powers, Captain Minnie needs guests to help navigate the ship toward uncharted worlds. Join Captain Minnie, Captain Mickey, and some of your favorite Disney characters on a multi-dimensional search for the magic across storybook worlds, including those of Moana, Nemo, Princess Tiana, Peter Pan, and more. Using your mobile device as an enchanted spyglass, embark 
on quests that let you interact with the ship in new and exciting ways. Then, battle an infamous Disney villain to restore the Wishing Star's magic and save the universe. That sounds fun. <laughs> Their stage shows are phenomenal, and of course, they have some new ones here. Classic stories, spectacular new storytelling. Behold dazzling Disney magic inside a luxurious setting inspired by the fantastical floral world of the animated classic Fantasia. Sit back and be entertained by Broadway-style shows that take some favorite stories and turn them into live fantasy, including a one-of-a-kind theatrical adaptation of the beloved 1989 Disney animated film The Little Mermaid. Created exclusively for the Disney Wish, this timeless story is told in a sensational production that features innovative theatrical design, dazzling special effects, artistic choreography, and a reimagined script and score that will surprise and delight guests of all ages. Other original shows include Disney Sees the Adventure, an embarkation celebration that provides a fabulous musical voyage into some favorite stories, and the always magical and often hilarious Disney's Aladdin, a musical spectacular. I think Disney Sees the Adventure will be a lot of fun. I'm not a huge Little Mermaid fan. I know a lot of people are, so that's going to be a lot of fun as well. Also for their activities, for water fun, make a splash. Sunshine meets fun time on the upper decks of the Disney Wish, home to tin pools and water play areas inspired by Mickey and his pals. Or toy around at Toy Story Splash Zone featuring larger than life rubber bath toys and the Slidosaurus Rex family slide. And of course there's going to be movies and live entertainment. Enjoy live music, comedy acts, and family game shows at Luna, an all new entertainment venue featuring family fun by day and elegant entertainment at night. Or catch first run films inside Wonderland Cinema and Neverland Cinema, two lush screening rooms inspired by Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland. Now I had read that the cinemas were going to have first run films in one and classics in the other. And I think Luna might be part of our nightclub aspect. We're going to come back to that. Their youth clubs on this ship are truly phenomenal and I think one of the very favorite things is going to be this slide. It goes from deck three down to deck two and adults are allowed to use it. That being said, I would use it only during open houses. I don't think we should be taking the slide down to the youth spaces while they reserve for youth only, but absolutely during the open houses, go have fun, go play. That's what they're for. Okay, they're actually so that parents can go in there and enjoy the time and see what they're doing. I think also, but hey, if you're traveling as adults only, go enjoy those tiny human clubs during their open houses. They have the Marvel Superhero Academy. This is for tiny humans ages 3 to 12. They're invited to spring into action and train alongside some of their favorite Marvel superheroes, including Spider-Man, Black Panther, Ant-Man, and the Wasp. Inside this sleek headquarters, tiny humans can unleash the hero within as they team up and select their very own super suit, and then put it to the test in a battle with some infamous villains of the Marvel Universe. Sometimes I wish my son was still young. This would be so fun. Next is the Star Wars Cargo Bay. Enter the Star Wars Universe. This is also youth from 3 to 12. Ready to support the Resistance? Join Rey and Chewbacca in this first of its kind immersive experience set on board a starship. Star Wars Galactic Creature Keepers is a fun-filled adventure at Star Wars Cargo Bay, where kids step into a highly interactive space modeled after a high-tech cargo bay. They're put to the test as they feed lifelike, interactive creatures and encounter some of the most dangerous beings in the galaxy. With the help of Rey and Chewbacca, they channel the Force to secure the ship. These really are immersive areas for the youth clubs. Next is the Walt Disney Imagineering Lab. Be a Disney Imagineer. Imagine what it would be like to create your own Disney attraction. Oh, how fun. At Walt Disney Imagineering Lab, tiny humans can do just that. Through exciting hands-on activities, get a unique behind-the-scenes peek and discover how Disney magic is made. Also tap into their own imaginations and design their very own roller coaster in the style of attraction classics like Big Thunder Mountain and Space Mountain. And climb into a specially designed capsule to actually ride it. Oh my gosh, how fun! I'm definitely going to go to the open houses and try some of these out. I have to, it's research, right? <laughs> they also have Fairy Tale Hall. Create your own storybook memories. Step into a classic fairy tale setting come to life and enjoy special visits from the Disney princesses and frozen queens themselves. Inside Fairy Tale Hall, young royals can craft floating lanterns at Rapunzel's art studio, act out their favorite stories in Belle's library, and even create their own ice magic at Anna and Elsa's summer house. Happily ever after on the high seas indeed. They also have Mickey and Minnie's captain's deck. Designed for the littlest cruisers, this nautically themed space is complete with activities and games, including pipe slides, ship's wheels, and more. 
Plus, for even more fun, kids can hang out with Captain Mickey and Captain Minnie when they stop by. And of course, they have the Small World Nursery. In this whimsical daycare center inspired by the beloved Disney attraction, little cruisers six months to three years of age can relax and play while being looked after by specially trained counselors and visited by some special Disney friends. The nursery is reservation and is typically also an extra charge, so make sure you look into that make those reservations that you may need. They also have clubs for tweens and teens. Relax, make friends, and play games at Edge, a colorful new New York City inspired hangout for tweens ages 11 to 14. How fun! I love that they really themed that as well. Teens ages 14 to 17 can chill out at Vibe, a laid back space where they can watch movies, enjoy games, and take the occasional selfie. <laughs> occasional, no way. They need a whole selfie studio. Older teens and young adults can check out the hideaway, an all new space designed just for them. And all of these fun areas are supervised by the coolest counselors at sea. And they also have the Hero Zone. This area has multiple uses. It can be a sports court, play playground, game floor, movie theater. The Hero Zone is a dynamic family recreation space offering all this and more. Are you up to the challenge? That sounds like a lot of fun too. It's, I think they have some family challenge games in there as well. Really a great idea. I do hope that they put the diaper dash in there. <laughs> I don't know. It almost seems like the diaper dash wouldn't fit on this ship though, but it is so much fun. At the Quiet Cove, you can luxuriate, sunbathe, and enjoy some relaxing alone time at this adults only refuge. Home to an infinity pool, a bar, and a poolside lounge. This infinity Infinity pool looks really beautiful. I've not actually been in one before, I'm realizing now, but I really love that they added this here. I have heard that it's a little small, so that'll have to be determined in person. But they've also got it more spread out on this ship so that hopefully places don't get as packed as they do on the other four. I am completely blown away by what they've done with this ship. It's an entirely new level of immersive entertainment and enchantment, and I am all the way here for it. So bars and lounges. They have multiple themed bars and lounges on the Disney Wish. What I have not seen is a nice Club. I've certainly seen posts asking about whether or not there is a nightclub. I don't think they actually have one. The nightclub is typically used for game shows like Match Your Mate or novelty performance like a comedy act that's adult only. And since it says that Luna is adult only in the evening, I think that that's probably where they're going to have that type of entertainment. But they don't have just a straight nightclub like they do on the other ships. Also, that nightclub was usually empty unless it was when they were doing Match Your Mate. And they would do silent. DJ, but I just don't think that there was enough people in there to justify it. People really love the theme bars and lounges, so I like that they've got more of those. In particular, the Rose, the Bayou, and Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge all look very intriguing to me. I want to go have cocktails at every single one. <laughs> and they have a signature cocktail at the Rose. It's covered with a dome, and then they slowly rotate smoke that comes out of it as they pull the dome off. Really cool. They definitely have some pricey cocktails on the way. The Rose signature cocktail is $50 and it has a whole bunch of words I can't pronounce so I'm not gonna read that to you but it's really cool with the smoke at the rose recall a tale as old as time at this adult exclusive lounge reminiscent of the enchanted castle from Beauty and the Beast where you can sip a cocktail surrounded by antique mirrors and floating rose petals while enjoying ocean views so beautiful that's the thing this ship just is just so beautiful another bar that looks really beautiful is the bayou head down to the bayou to enjoy some New Orleans inspired refreshments in a unique and formal lounge inspired by the magical marsh in Walt Disney's animated film The Princess and the Frog. Flourishing with magnolia blossoms, lily pads, and a canopy of twinkling fireflies overhead, this space brings alive the enchantment of that iconic Louisiana swamp and is home to live musical performances and other fun-filled events. And of course they have the French Quarter Lounge and Tiana's Place Restaurant on the Disney Wonder and they are great but the bayou is so beautiful. Just everything on the Disney Wish is stunning. I am really in awe of how beautiful this ship is and how immersive it is. They also have Nightingales. Sit back and sip at Nightingales, a sophisticated piano bar inspired by Cinderella, who lyrically sang Sing Sweet Nightingale in Walt Disney's animated classic Cinderella. This classically modern space is crowned by a large glittering chandelier featuring a swirl of pearlescent bubbles and music notes meticulously crafted out of shimmering rose gold. Again, Nightingales is just stunning. I can't wait to go there and just enjoy the space. One of my favorite things about theming and fantasy is is just enjoying the space, just sitting in it. And while the other cruise ships are great, they do not take that to the level that the Disney Wish does. So I'm really excited. I know that's all I have to say, it seems like, is I'm excited, but this ship is stunning.
And it also has a speakeasy. At Hooks Barbary, get a shave fit for a captain at Hooks Barbary, an upscale salon inspired by Captain Hook's private quarters aboard the Jolly Roger, as depicted in Walt Disney's animated classic Peter Pan. In addition to hairstyling, nail, and skincare, adults 21 and older can enjoy a hidden bar featuring the finest whiskeys, bourbon, and rum for tasting during treatments and at special events. And Chris Hayner has a great look here at a cocktail from Hooks Barbary. This is an old fashioned that was served to him while he was getting his treatment done. There are quite a few speakeasies in our town, but I'm a bit of a homebody and haven't been to them. I'm really excited to try this one out on the Disney Wish. And they do have a Cove Cafe, which has alcohol in there as well. They have a Currents Bar up on Deck 14. There's the Lookout on Deck 11. They also have another cafe, the Wishing Star Cafe on Deck 4, and the Enchanted Sword Cafe on Deck 5. I haven't really seen much information about those yet, but I really do love that they have multiple cafes. Interestingly enough, Disney Cruise Line's website does not have everything on their deck plan yet so there is still more to come and of course what's going to be probably the most popular bar is the star wars hyperspace lounge take to the stars inside this stylish star wars themed space bar where you can sample some exotic worldly concoctions while being transported to popular destinations throughout the galaxy notable about this bar obviously is that it looks like you're in a star wars spaceship but there's i believe seven or eight tables and about six or seven chairs at the bar so there's not a lot of seating in this bar they were using reservations at times through their first cruise and I do like it that it's not more tables because that space could really get overrun with people unless it's held to a maximum. The most notable thing they have there is the menu includes the Kyber Crystal, a $5,000 Star Wars cocktail. The galactic beverage is primarily made with Camus Cognac. It also includes the Japanese citrus fruit yuzu as well as kumquat. Apparently ritzy cocktails can never have enough cognac because the Kyber Crystal also features Grand Marnier Quintessence which is considered considerably pricier than the Camas Cognac. And speaking of pricey, the bartender adds shots of ultra expensive Happy Van Winkles Family Reserve 23 year bourbon and Taylor's Fladgate Kingsman Edition Very Old Tawny Port. There's actually a third shot in there as well. And also, if you order this, you'll also get a bottle of wine from Skywalker Vineyards. You'll get like a backpack and some other stuff as well. You get to keep all the cups. And I think probably the biggest thing with this is that you get one visit to Skywalker Vineyards. It is at George Lucas's Skywalker ranch and it is not open to the public so i think the big thing for people is actually going to skywalker ranch it's a great presentation and sounds like some good alcohol but definitely skywalker ranch i think is the selling point on that one so make sure you visit the bars and lounges while you're on board because they are stunning and really really immersive and the last one is the keg and compass keg and compass is a pub that celebrates the adventure and romance of the sea designed in the rustic architectural style of a late 1800s norwegian sailors map room and drawing inspiration from the rich folklore of Norse seafaring. This casual setting will be the perfect place to kick back and watch live sports, news, and major broadcast events while sampling a specialized selection of beers, including three custom craft brews available exclusively aboard the Disney Wish. One other thing that is new to this ship is the outdoor oasis section of the spa. This area will be Disney Cruise Line's first ever outdoor spa retreat, complete with whirlpool spas, plush loungers, and plenty of space for open air yoga yoga session. So definitely the rainforest package is going to be worth it for those. This open air oasis is a brand new extension to our signature rainforest experience, which has been reimagined for the Disney wish to provide even more ways to relax and rejuvenate. The rainforest will introduce the fleet's first ice lounge, allowing guests to combine thermal therapies, which promotes both physical wellness and tranquility. It will also include guests' favorite elements like heated ergonomic loungers, sensory spa showers, and sauna, steam, and dry chairs. Chambers. The staterooms are really beautiful on the Disney Wish. I've heard that they also have a nook for the trash can as well as an upgraded refrigerator and a little bit more storage. So they are going to be more user friendly as well as stunningly beautiful. This whole ship is just gorgeous. And the last piece is the concierge area. I have not traveled concierge yet. I do hope to in the future. But what was noticeably different for me on this ship is that they have really beautiful concierge areas. In the Magic and Wonder, my understanding is there is no outdoor concierge area. The Disney Fantasy and Dream have more concierge 
space than the magic or the wonder, but the Disney Wish is by far the best of they all. They have lounger spaces that look over the ocean. They have a hot tub that looks over the ocean. On the other ships, some of the concierge spaces are more inside, so they're kind of blocked from the ocean view. So it looks like concierge on the Disney Wish is going to be way more worth it than on the other ships. That being said, a lot of people say that concierge is worth it because of the special service that you get. I think that also comes with a level of money, honestly. Some people can afford to do concierge for every trip and some can do it for one. Whatever works for you, obviously. They all have a little something to offer, but I've got to say with the Wish, it totally cuts out the dream and fantasy for me because my favorite ship is the Wonder. I like how it's smaller. It seems more intimate. You really get to know your serving team, which is a lot of fun. But they are doing their planning well because I would also like seven night cruises and the Disney Wish doesn't have those. They only have three and four nights. It's not going to provide that week long relaxation that you can get on the other ships. Also, now that the dream is going overseas, they're really splitting this up pretty well because they'll have a big ship overseas. So I wouldn't even consider the dream at all in my future plans except for going overseas especially if they do a transatlantic the dream would be more fun i think than the magic in that scenario and then of course the fantasy is going to come from port canaveral as well but they do seven night cruises so if you really want a seven night cruise in order to do that on the wish you would have to do back to back you have to go back and there's nothing wrong with that of course we love to go back to disney cruise especially with a placeholder we've also got disney wish and nine things they didn't show you, you can check that out here and thanks for being here thanks for watching and thanks for sharing and all the fun and excitement of a new Disney cruise ship. I just love sharing the fun. Once you're subscribed, make sure you ring that little bell. It'll let you know when we have any new videos. And we'll see you real soon with some more Disneys.